Well, good morning to everybody, and thank you so much for making history with us today at the Catalina Islander Museum with our first ever virtual members. Um, more than 100 people um, signed up, about 126, and they're coming in now, which is very exciting, and joining us now. Um, and of course, today we're here to celebrate the history of plein air painting on Catalina Island through the exhibition, Catalina Paintings, Night and Day. Um, we're so super grateful for this opportunity to be together with you. And obviously we cannot wait to have you back here on, at the museum. Um, and as I mentioned just a moment ago, we want you to know that we have plans to incorporate these types of members only events into all of our future programming so that you can join us wherever you may roam. On behalf of the Board of Trustees and the staff, we want to thank you for being a member of the Catalina Island Museum. Your support has really helped float us through a difficult time. And just knowing that you're there has boosted our morale every day and feeds us with creativity and confidence to continue to be the best we can be for you and for the Avalon community. So just a couple of notes before we get started with our program okay. today. Um, I didn't even introduce myself, which I should do. I'm Julie Perlin Lee, the Executive Director of the Catalina Island Museum, and I will be your MC for the program today. Um, for the best viewing experience, you want to put your Zoom into the speaker view option, and we'll give you the full screen option. Uh, there is a chat feature. You can see that at the bottom of your screen. So if you would like to, you can ask questions and communicate with us um, and others. And at the end of the program, like I said, we're going to unmute everybody again so we can um, say hello. I know everyone is missing each other and uh, anxious to talk about art and Catalina and all the wonderful things that uh, we're doing here. And um, finally, I want to let you know that we're going to, we are recording this program. So um, we know that there's many of our members who cannot join us at this time today. And some of you might want to re-watch re this program or even share it with folks in your household or whatever you do. So we are recording the program today so you can watch it again. Uh, so with that, it is now my pleasure to introduce you to Johnny Sampson. Uh, he is our director of exhibitions, and he joined our staff uh, fairly recently in September of 2019, so last September. And um, the Catalina Paintings Night and Day Exhibition is the first show that Johnny curated and designed for the museum. And he is here now to walk all of us through the gallery. So ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Johnny Sampson. Hello, everybody. It's such a such a pleasure to, to have you here with us. Thank you so much for that introduction, Julie. Um, yeah, this is the Catalina Night and Day exhibit, which um, it opened on February 8th, but um, it only lasted about a month and a half before we had to, uh, before I was the only one who got to enjoy it. So what I'm going to do is just give you a little idea about what we did here, um, obviously the history of plein air painting and all these other things will be addressed throughout our program, but I'll tell you a little bit about the show. Um, so actually, let me just start and I'll walk you through. So the plein air, um, this show in particular was set up to, as to reflect a 24 hour day on Catalina. Uh, most of the visitors to the island get here about midday and so they miss out on all the rest of the time and all the rest of the areas of Catalina besides Avalon. Um, with this, we're uh, trying to get together a selection of nocturnes and daytime paintings that just show everything around. It's kind of hard to do both of these at the same time. <laughs> Here's Joe Paquette's with a uh, Harbor Glow, me and C2's view of the Tuna Club. Over here is Ken Backhouse's Dreamy Haze over Catalina. A lot of these paintings will be talked about again throughout our program, as I mentioned. In fact, we have 33 works in this show uh, by 18 contemporary artists. Plein air painting in itself was a kind of came from the legacy and philosophy of the Impressionist painters. Um, 
a century ago. Um, and the idea is to capture the fleeting moment of light there. You can see on the Quonset huts that were erected right around after World War II. Here are the Rusak vineyards. And once again, all these places of Catalina that, that people do not get to see, the, <laughs> the boathouse. Here, I'll actually take a moment and, uh, and zoom in a little bit so you can, <laughs> you can see this a little closer. Um, not only is it about places that people don't get to see, but also time. So here you can see the goat and deer trails um, on this view above Descanso by Joe Paquette. And I mean, those, those are a thing of the past, just like the Quonset huts um, that no longer exist. Here, let me uh, pause here again. Uh, here you have a Gerald Fritzler and uh, another Joe Paquette painting. They actually painted this side by side. And notice with Fritzler, he's using watercolor and Joe is using oil, but plein air painting is about capturing mood and capturing the light. And here they both capture a similar mood although using completely a uh, different medium to do it. So as we're slowly getting through the day, you can start to see the shadows stretch across the works. We'll return here in just a minute, actually. Uh, speaking of Joe Paquette from earlier, I want to mention this piece right here. This is his uh, uh, Cape Canyon. It's a study. And so he captures the light, he's trying to capture an authentic feeling. And here, let me spin, now you're seeing a larger piece, that, a masterpiece that he did um, from that uh, study in his studio. So on plein air, he was able to capture the feeling of the light and the mood. And here, let me zoom in, and you can actually see um, that same study right there in this larger masterpiece that he was able to do from the studio. Um, which would have been impossible to do uh, with anything other than doing it from on plein air and actually getting that authenticity. Here's a view actually from uh, Upper Terrace looking down Third Street. Kevin McPherson, I just love the way the silver just reflects there or then the flash of the Garibaldi's on this uh, Ken Backhouse piece. These two of the casino, the inside and out, I just, I, I mean, they just glow from within. And notice the, the parallel lines between the two pieces. They, are, they pair so nicely together. They just seem alive. You can feel, you can hear the glasses clink in the one of the casino right there by Brian Stewart. Love it. This is actually a museum piece um, in our collection of Brian Stewart of the quarry. Here's a Ron Riddick. Actually, speaking of Brian Stewart, this is another piece I love. If you it's kind of looking off over the Laguna, I love just how intimate it is. Looking up Catalina Street, it's called Morning Delivery. Here's a Tom Browning. He is amazing on plein air. He also does uh, Hallmark cards. He is uh, known for his Santas. Gregory Hall and another Ken Bachhaus of the pier. Let me just spin around and give you just another look of this. You can see the two colors is to represent the kind of raking shadow as the sun goes behind you know, the, the mountains to separate that day and night. I'll just walk us through one more time because this is, the, the show actually closes tomorrow. So this is, this is our last time. <laughs> to go through Catalina paintings. These are actually views of the Glenmore by, uh, by John Budison. And do you know what, I'm gonna zoom in here because this is the uh, John Cosby's Burger in the Sky. Um, and maybe we can bring in John Cosby to, uh, to chat a little bit with me. And there's John. Okay, I think I'm unmuted now. Hey, welcome. <laughs> it's good to, you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Have you. A moment to chat about Burgers in the Sky with me and your, uh, your selection on that piece and to choose uh, on most of the plein air work I see don't, don't usually have people and in this one you, you do. Tell me a little bit about this. 
Well, some some places are kind of hard to separate the people out from the landscape or the or the uh, play, sense of place. So uh, years ago, I decided I needed to figure out how to do that, and I found that people do things. Um, I, t I look for areas where when, that I'm going to paint where people will do things over and over again. So uh, I first discovered it in San Francisco. They'd go up to a stop uh, a stoplight and they would press the button over and over and over again. So I could there's enough time in that freeze frame to to get a figure in there in a gestural kind of pose. And eating uh, isn't another excellent thing in restaurants. So I do a lot of restaurants and and crosswalks really. <laughs> any, any place that people repeat themselves uh, walking up sidewalks I can use sometimes a head or a body off one person and a shirt off another and kind of pick and choose but as long as I get the gesture of what they're doing it usually uh, works out to be a decent uh, rendition of what's going on and the ambiance of place I think, and that's something I, I think I kind of glossed over there with plein air. Like, it's not about capturing reality. It's about capturing the authenticity, the actual feeling of the, of the place. So I think that you're just amazing yeah, exactly. captured there. Well, it, it, one of the things that photography uh, just doesn't give you in reference to painting is uh, you either blow out the light or you blow out the shadows. So by being there, you not only get the truth uh, of what's going on the way we really see, but you also uh, get the smells and the flavors of uh, the place. Mm -hmm. So it, it comes into the painting, it leaks in. And speaking of place, I mean, you, you what's it like? Coming to Catalina, you paint a lot here. What's, what is it like painting here? I'm sorry? Uh, what is it like painting on Catalina since we're talking about location? Well, uh, Catalina is totally unique as all of you know. Uh, it's, it's got a draw that um, not only great color, but the light's uh, fairly consistent. The weather's good. The people are friendly. The natives are generally friendly. <laughs> uh, and, and there's places that aren't, but I've been going there since I was, I don't know, five, four years old. My, my parents had boats and we had a can out in, the, in Avalon. So um, I just went over and I, I got really attached to the island early, like I'm, I'm sure a lot of people do, uh, a lot of people I've talked to do. And uh, I, it was a natural progression from my illustration career uh, early in my life to start uh, Paint. I didn't have a studio that I could paint larger works in. I, I was an airbrush artist. So when I was learning to paint 35 years ago in oils uh, and acrylics, I, I would come to Catalina because I could get away from people and set up my easel and, and just do my best. And uh, I didn't have a, I was, I'm not trained. So I, um, I was kind of picking my way through and figuring things out. And Catalina was a great place to do it because I knew it so well and there was so much character. Do you have a favorite spot on Catalina to, uh, to capture? No. No. <laughs> no, everywhere uh, has such a unique uh, sense of place. And one of the things that uh, happened to me early in my career is I didn't know what plain air was because I didn't really know the history of uh, things. I was just trying to uh, capture things that were in front of me. And as I learned it, I, I realized that... Uh, uh, painting on location was everything. And I was only painting on location because I didn't have a studio that would work. So uh, I needed to kind of hone in on my color balances and things like that to truly get the sense of a day. And yet I'm a pretty colorful painter. So I didn't want to lose that uh, side of my, my uh, aesthetic. So uh, I've, I've managed to make a career out of it now for 35 years. And uh, Catalina has been a big part of it. Excellent. Any anything else you'd like to uh, to share with us? Any any? Well, uh, you know, as far as the museum goes, uh, obviously this was a long time coming, and uh, you know, my hats off to people like Roy Rose, and I know there's a lot of people that were involved in that, but I I heard him talking about that for uh, museum for a long time, and um, his collection supported uh, the early plein air work. Uh, literally supported it uh, so we could all have boat fare to get over there. So my hat's off to Roy and uh, people uh, who really care about art like that make such a difference with painters because we aren't, uh, most of us don't have uh, 
any kind of uh, income other than what the collectors provide us. So it's not only the, the love of the art we're looking for, it's uh, uh, help support our passion. Mm -hmm. So I certainly appreciate all the support that uh, all of my collectors have given me over the years and uh, seem to be continuing to give. So thank you, everybody. And I, if everybody weren't muted, I'm sure they'd all say thank you to you too. So <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, thank you, John, for chatting with us today. And um, I thank you all for joining this program. I'm going to send it back to Julie. Okay, thanks so much, Johnny and John. John, your work is um, just delightful. It reminds me just how fortunate we are to highlight you and all the other artists in the exhibition who have each garnered um, such really great respect as artists and earned many acknowledgements, uh, all well deserved, and have given us a unique way of seeing the world. Um, and we need art and artists more than ever now, so thank you. And now it's my pleasure to introduce you to longtime friend of the Catalina Island Museum, Sue Riccolo. Sue is one of those remarkable individuals that make our island community so wonderful. In addition to running businesses at the airport in the sky and the steamer trunk here in Avalon, she has been a tireless volunteer. And um, coming up in just a moment, we've asked Sue to speak about the airport in the sky and why she loves John Cosby's cheeseburgers in the sky. Hi, I'm Sue Riccolo. I'm the owner and operator of the restaurant up at the airport in the sky, and I have been for about almost 40 years. So I wanted to talk a little bit about this painting, which I love. And the first thing that struck me is there is so much history up at the, on Catalina, aviation history on the island. But this, this building in the back of the painting is a hangar that was first used in 1931 down at Hamilton Cove when there was early flights to the island that were amphibious. And Philip Ridley was, loved aviation, really involved in early aviation. He was on the board of directors of United Airlines. So in 1940, he undertook a huge task of building an uh, airport in the interior. So he took two mountaintops, leveled them, built a runway, um, brought the hangar up, constructed the tower, the waiting room, and then World War II happened. So they stopped everything. They were afraid the Japanese would use the landing strip as a base to the mainland. So they put barbed wire on it, they trashed it, and nothing happened until 1946. In 1946, it was a great destination for United Airlines passengers. They would land, they'd go into that beautiful lobby with Catalina tile tables and couches in front of the fireplace and that patio where we have food orders now. That was the counter and baggage handling area. And then they would wait for the bus that would take them into town. In 1955, they decided to open the airport up to private planes, but pilots were very reluctant to come over because it had been forbidden and there had been some pretty serious consequences, like you might even have to get your plane down the hill and barge it back to the mainland. So I heard a story where the control tower guy and another person took over the airways and bantered with each other about, this is, you know, whiskey, two niner, seven oh, Juliet coming to the island and the control tower would go, come on over, the weather's great, to get interest up in landing. So they started getting a, lots of small planes coming over and they started having pancake breakfasts on the weekends where our barbecue area is now, that was a grill for pancake breakfasts and that has evolved over time and now we're a restaurant with barbecues. So I love this painting. It just evokes all the fun times people have up there and how fun it is to get out in the hills and just pilots fly over and the first thing they say is, wow, I landed and I heard birds singing and it's just such a wonderful getaway. So this painting symbolizes that plus a lot of history. Super, thank you, Sue, thank you. If um, any of you have yet to try one of the magically delicious cookies sold up at the DC3 Grill and Gifts, make sure you put a drive up to the airport on your next Catalina trip itinerary. 
Um, okay, this is exciting. Now we're gonna take a trip down to our beautiful harbor. Obviously, Avalon Harbor is the centerpiece of our town, and it is no surprise that so many artists who have come to paint on Catalina Island have focused their attention there. Um, we're gonna speak um, with our harbor master, JJ Poindexter, uh, who is at the Green Pleasure Pier, about his experiences of the harbor night and day. Hello, my name is JJ Poindexter. Um, worked in the harbor for 35 years. I started off as a trash boy picking up trash, and um, now all of a sudden I'm harbor master. Well, during the day, there's a lot of there's a lot of activity. A lot of people moving around. A lot of boats coming in. A lot of people on uh, um, paddle boards. A lot of uh, uh, Joe Renner boats driving around. People in skiffs. At nighttime, it in, in when it gets dark, it kind of just calms down, and you have a, a it's a beautiful picture of of Avalon with the boats and the lights and and the town in the backdrop. Well, I tell you what, in 35 years, there's been quite a few. Um, uh, we, I look at it from the standpoint of, we've had a couple of great um, life-saving saves where a person had had a heart attack and um, was unresponsive, we did CPR, they sent him to the mainland and uh, um, laid in a coma for three days and came back six months later to say thank you. So I guess that's probably, uh, it's probably a neat thing. Actually, I like the one with the uh, Joe's runner boat in that uh, sun kisses the morning. That's a, that's a very nice picture. Because of the, uh, the calmness before the storm, before the onslaught of people, before everything's moving and the wind comes up and uh, people are in boats get here and moving around. And so yeah, it's, it's a nice calming. No, I'm not the painter in my family. My uh, wife's a painter and my daughter is pretty good at it, but not me. <laughs> you know, actually, at 35 years of doing this, this is, uh, um, this is a pretty good, pretty good gig. I've, I've seen a lot of old time actors and actresses. Johnny Carson used to come over here. Um, Joy Bishop in his boat. Uh, Ed McMahon in his boat. And, you know, people come down and, and relax. John Wayne, Wild Goose. And Duke, you know, uh, for you that remember Duke, he was the greeter here in Avalon, and, and he was the old guy in the pirate ship movies all the time. So um, there's a lot, a lot of history here, and it, uh, I was very fortunate to be able to raise my family here. <laughs> that was terrific. Uh, uh, made, made me laugh. Thank you, JJ, so much. And um, while I'm looking at the harbor, it reminds me, I wanted to say a very special thank you to the Catalina Island Yacht Club. We invited their members to join us today. Uh, the foundation of the Yacht Club got together and helped the museum in our recent annual appeal and made up for the last amount we needed to reach our goal, um, which we're so grateful and appreciative for. Um, so thank you and welcome to all the Catalina Island Yacht Club members who are here. Um, and thank you for all you do in the Avalon community as well. So, well, back to plain air painting on Catalina Island. Um, some of you may know, but for those who don't, there was really a huge resurgence, resurgence of um, the contemporary painting here in the late 1980s when artists were invited to come and paint for a week and exhibit and sell their works. And this event was organized by a group of volunteers who eventually formed a nonprofit called the Society for the Advancement of Plein Air Painters. And their mission was to educate the public about contemporary outdoor painting. Um, as John had mentioned earlier, without their efforts, the paintings in the museum's collection and in our exhibition today, uh, exhibition would really not be here today. And, um, and to talk a little bit more about this and um, painting in general, uh, we've invited our board of trustee, Roy Rose, who was there from the start to um, talk to us today. So we're very fortunate to hear directly from Roy, uh, right from his Avalon Art Gallery. So ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Roy Rose. Hello to all of our uh, members, and I'm going to be talking to you today a little bit about the history of plein air painting, outdoor painting, impressionist painting uh, in Avalon and Catalina. 
Well, I've lived in Catalina uh, most of my t life, uh, so far anyway, uh, since about 1943. I was just a kid and uh, I have a history of uh, art appreciation that goes back through the family. And I was always curious and interested, but I didn't really get involved in things until uh, I was about 23 years old, 24 years old, and uh, I was fascinated with some of the, the paintings, the offerings at the Art Association's annual street show. And really, the, I, I tended to uh, follow, uh, my choice was Impressionism, uh, plein air painting, but I kind of went all over the board at first and was uh, just really happy that we had this event. It drew a lot of people. And as time went by, I honed my collection, uh, specialized in uh, really the, the paintings that had their origins outdoors, were not painted in the studio, and followed the traditional Impressionist method of painting, which first was blossomed in the United States in the 1870s and became extremely uh, popular in a, a short period of time, really blossomed, and then like most uh, painting uh, types, forms, fashions, it, people get tired and, and it, it phased out. Uh, by 1929, 28, 29, uh, there was hardly anyone left doing uh, outdoor painting. Impressionism is the, is the name, outdoor painting is the game, and it gets a little confusing, and sometime when you see me in the museum or on the street, any of you that would like a little better definition, I'll do it then. It wasn't until 1976 that uh, it was noticed that there was a tremendous resurgence in the interest in outdoor painting, Impressionism. And on Catalina, we had the good fortune to have a wonderful uh, lady by the name of Denise Burns, Mrs. Robert Burns, who uh, was a, an accomplished artist, and she had a tremendous drive to do things. And she started going all around uh, the United States, going to shows, going to art schools, going to various things. And she decided, why not have a show in Catalina? And she had met so many artists from over the country that she went ahead and put together a show and it was uh, uh, held it in the uh, El Encanto where the uh, spa is now uh, for the first two years and it was really uh, very successful. It really uh, surprised me the quality of the work and all, and uh, I had quite a collection of earlier turn of the century uh, Impressionist works of art, and, and uh, yeah, I thought I had the best. But I kept an open mind to this, and I remember uh, the first painting that I bought from the show uh, was just uh, opened my eyes to really how great it, it is. So I'm going to get up and walk over uh, to the painting. This one is called Boat Day. The cruise ship is out here and has turned the, uh, their passengers loose on the town. If you look from back five feet or farther across the room where I was sitting before, you know that's people just crowding in on the street. If you go up close, 
It's just little tiny daubs of color. Nobody is, uh, a body is no more than four or five or six blobs of, of color. But the artist knows how to do it so that you see movement. And I think that's very, very exciting. And a painting like this, I watched him paint this, wasn't more than two hours. So uh, it's remarkable. And we have uh, uh, in, in our Catalina Museum, we have plans to continue expanding uh, with art, not just in uh, plein air art, outdoor art, impressionist art, but all forms of art. And that will be a focus in one way that we show the history of the evolution as time goes by of our town. We'll have pictures of things, paintings of things that are no longer here. We already in the museum have paintings of our museum site when it was the old Avalon uh, City Hall and Fire Station and the Ida Courts and all of that and then of its gradual destruction over a period of three or four years while the site was being prepared and pictures, of, of paintings of the building under construction and of course finished. So thank you for your indulgence. I hope it's been of some enlightenment to you and wish you all well and continue supporting the Catalina Island Museum. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Roy. It is one of the true joys of my life to get to collaborate with Roy Rose often and regularly. He um, is such an inspiration um, and just, um, I'm just so appreciative of you, Roy. And that painting shown of the museum uh, being con during construction was created by Brian Stewart and it is a true treasure um, in our collection and on display all the time. So you can come to the museum and see that painting anytime. And now um, to talk about another of Stewart's paintings and arguably the most lively painting in the Catalina Painting Night and Day exhibition is Miss Jen Poyer. Hi, I'm Jen Poyer with the Catalina Island Conservancy, and I'm here to share with you a little bit of the backstory behind Brian Stewart's painting, The Conservancy Ball. The first Conservancy Ball, originally called the Commodore's Ball, took place in 1996 in the Avalon Casino Ballroom and was hosted by Corsair Yacht Club and chaired by Randy and Casey Bolsoms. After that first successful event, various yacht clubs from throughout Southern California carried on the tradition of hosting the ball each year with the proceeds benefiting the work of the Catalina Island Conservancy, which stewards 88% of the island. I joined the staff of the Conservancy in the summer of 2007 and it took over production of the ball from there. Since then, we've continued to see it grow with guests attending from across the country. It was shortly after that that Brian Stewart reached out to express his interest about painting at the ball. We worked out the details and that night he showed up just after dinner in his jeans and sneakers and we found a place for him to set up his easel. And as I stood there next to him, I watched all the guests come by that were absolutely enthralled by the work that he was doing and how he was capturing the atmosphere in the room that night. The finished painting was included in the Conservancy's Catalina of the Wild Side art show later that year. And to my surprise, the art committee selected it as an acquisition for the Conservancy's permanent plein air collection. So since that time, it's been on display and many of you have been able to enjoy this painting in person. I also was able to enjoy it as he was painting it there that night and he captured a few of my most favorite memories. If you look in the bottom right corner of the painting, you'll see our members of Los Caballeros, the men's horseback riding group that has their annual trek on the island each fall depicted in their Stetsons and boots and belt buckles. I also enjoy the beautiful French doors and Art Deco medallions that encircle the ballroom that are featured in the background of the painting. The cantilevered ceiling, which is an architectural wonder, and the infamous chandelier. 
We lost Brian Stewart a couple of years ago, but I will never forget his perspective and humorous approach to life and life on Catalina Island. I hope that we'll be able to gather again in person soon, and maybe we'll be seeing you at the next Conservancy Ball. Oh gosh, thanks so much, Jen, and to the Catalina Island Conservancy for lending Stuart's painting to our exhibition. Uh, we thought next we'd take you on a quick trip around the island to look at some of the paintings and the actual locations they depict. So enjoy everybody. Thank you, thank you, uh, Gail. Thank you for putting that together. It feels great to get out and about around the island, and I'm sure there's a lot of a lot of us out there who'd like to be in many of those places now. So, and I hope everyone's really enjoying our presentation so far. Uh, we have something really special next. Um, using the painting Catalina Island Rock Quarry, a nocturne, as inspiration, our registration and collections associate. Excuse me, Associate Patty Salazar is going to talk to us briefly about the history of mining on Catalina Island. And um, her talk will be followed by a recently digitized footage um, filmed by Malcolm Renton in 1926, showing scenes of William Wrigley Jr., DM Renton, and others as they inspect the mining operations on the island. Uh, this is just an example of some of the work the staff and I have been doing since our closure, um, discovering, finding, and digitizing these priceless films showing our island's history. Um, so Patty, over to you and thank you. Hi everyone, I am Patty Salazar, Registration and Collections Associate at the Catalina Island Museum where my job is to take care of the artifacts and resources of the museum. Um, inspired by the painting, Catalina Island Rock Quarry. Um, let me put on my slide so you can see the image of the painting I'm talking about. Okay. Inspired by the painting, Catalina Island Rock Quarry, a nocturne currently on display on our exhibition, I am going to tell you a little bit about the history of mining on Catalina Island. The first people to conduct mining on Catalina Island were the native inhabitants who had a large scale production sites of steatite or soapstone. Easy to carve, it was made and traded throughout the Western United States as utilitarian and decorative objects. During the time of the Catalina Gold Rush, eager prospectors rushed to the island and by 1864, there were about 70 miners living on the island who had um, stacked claims and dug thousands of feet of mines. Instead of gold, they found galena, 
or of silver, zinc, and lead, mostly surrounding the, is, um, the island's isthmus. When the U.S. government dispatched Union soldiers to the island during the Civil War, the miners were forced to leave. Catalina's gold rush was over, but people continued to use the island's mineral resources, including Catalina marble, a serpentine rock um, quarried from Empire Landing by the Banning family, which can still be seen on buildings in Los Angeles and San Francisco. In this next slide, you will be able to see an Im image of the Empire Landing quarry in 1965. Rock was also quarried from Empire Landing and Pebbly Beach as early as the 1890s to begin building breakwaters on the mainland. Since that time, Catalina Island Rock has, used, has been used to build harbors, marinas, islands, reefs, jetties, and breakwaters. This activity is continued today, most visibly from Connolly Pacific's Pebbly Beach Quarry on the west end of the island as shown in Brian Stewart's painting. And this next slide, you will be able to see an aerial view where you can see the rock quarry. In the 1920s, as part of his exploration of industry for Catalina Island, William Wrigley Jr. opened large mines to take out silver, lead, and zinc. Ore was carried from Blackjack Mine along a four mile long aerial tramway to be processed at a 100-ton flotation. Mill built in 1925 at White's Landing. Ore from Renton's mine near Avalon was shipped by barge to the flotation mill. The yield eventually dropped. The mining operations were closed. The flotation mill was closed in 1927. And now it is my pleasure to share with you, for the very first time, recently digitized film footage from mining activities on Catalina Island in 1926. Enjoy.
my gosh that was so great thank you patty and a uh, special thanks to michael mortilla um, our award-winning composer friend who helps us all year round with so many projects um, that was so amazing to watch the old chimes tower just uh, the, the the new chimes tower now uh um there and no no guardrails on the roads and gosh that was just great and i think uh, for me, anyway, the the most footage we have in one place of Mr. Wrigley. So it's just a real um, exciting for us to find that and share that with all of you. Um, and now to the sweetest part of our program. Um, thanks to the many donors who um, support our education initiatives here at the museum. We've been able to keep our Avalon Youth inspired with art even during museum and school closures. We had an overwhelming response from our community to participate in today's program. So ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy Avalon's youngest artists and their recreations of Catalina paintings, night and day.
my gosh, they're so great. Thank you to all of you, to our members. You help make that happen. Um, it, it just uh, warms my heart. And like I said, an overwhelming response from the community. We've been asked if we can do that every week. <laughs> so that's a great sign for the future of art and painting here on Catalina Island. So, so super sweet. And speaking of sweet, um, a little music inspired by our exhibition. Please join me in welcoming one of our museum's favorite performance groups, Primrose River. Hi, I'm Alessandra and I'm doing an ode to the painting at Machine Gun Park, which is right behind you and captures the beauty of the bay and the casino. And I like this spot because it makes me think of one of my favorite memories on the island when I invited my two best friends, Heather and Anne, to sing with me at the museum. And we got off the boat and just walked right that way, singing together and having a great time. And here's to days with sunnier weather and being with your friends in beautiful places. We'll meet again don't know where, don't know when, but I know we'll meet again some sunny day. Keep smiling through, just like you always do, till the blue skies drive the dark clouds far away. Will you please say hello to the folks that I know? I won't be long, they'll be happy to know that as you saw me go, I was singing this song. We'll meet again, don't know where, don't know when, but I know we'll meet again some sunny day. Keep smiling through, just like you always do. Thank you, Primrose River, for that. And yes, we cannot wait to be together again with all of you. We hope so much that you've enjoyed today's members only event and the opportunity to view Catalina paintings night and day in this new and exciting way. If you'd like to chat and mingle together, um, as some of us were at the beginning of our program, we're going to be unmuting everyone in just a moment. Um, and remember, we will be sending a recording of this program to you in the coming days. Thank you to all of our members and to everyone, our exhibition sponsors, everyone who made today so special. Um, and I'd like to say a special thank you to the staff of the Catalina Island Museum who worked so hard to make this happen. You guys are amazing. Take good care, everybody, and um, looking forward to chatting with you all. <laughs>